how does the organization ensure that the that in fact autonomy support is more like a cultural pattern rather than just one teacher deciding that they should do that that's a good question a lot of it was evolutionary in terms of what you know kind of flying uh, building the airplane while they were flying it you know in terms of what worked and what didn't but it's interesting uh, i i think to begin with Lou Marx was a strong supporter of democratic decision making by the mm -hmm. staff and uh, so that kind of reinforced the whole concept of I think not only empowerment of the staff their autonomy from the rest of the district which mm. still is maintained a great deal in terms of well that's school without walls you know they kind of do their thing you know they you know they've got freedom in terms of curriculum, in terms of standards, in terms of assessment, mm. pedagogy, everything. You know, they do their own thing. So that was critical in terms of that group of staff that Lou recruited. And by the way, I applied in 1971 to be a, a teacher at that school, and I didn't make it. I didn't make the oh. cut. You know, I made the other one at the junior high, interim ah. junior high, but not, not school without walls. But anyway... So I think uh, staff selection was important. It was a yeah, critical that. aspect in terms of recruiting people who support the goals. I think in mm -hmm. terms of organizational health, I think that's critical to have people there that kind of buy into this philosophy and, and direction that they're going in. One of the first things that they did, of course, they didn't have a curriculum. They, they didn't... They didn't have classes, they didn't have anything. They met in a warehouse, and I think from what I, I can recall visiting there once was that the principal's office, Lou's office, had a big steel beam going through it, and every time he stood up, he hit his head on it. So uh. I don't know whether or not that maybe was the slap, on, slap upside the head that generated more <laughs> creativity or not. But anyway, that was unique in terms of the place that they met. They had a yeah. picture of the school opening on the first day of uh, school, and one teacher, her name was Val Bond at that time, Val McPherson now, she met with her group of kids, about 12 kids. School was 175 kids that was selected oh, okay. by lottery. Mm -hmm. And they met around the hood of a car, <laughs> and they were, uh, it was interesting. Some of the kids were smoking, you know. I mean, there were all these issues, you know, in terms of, what are we going to allow and not allow or whatever? But they, and so these groups of kids who were kind of randomly assigned to these teachers talked about issues in terms of what excites you. You know, what should mm -hmm. we be offering classes in? What should we do? So <clears throat> I'm skipping over parts of it, but in general what happened, there was a bulletin board outside the office that had three by five cards on it with all kinds of, classes that were going to be offered. If you're interested in learning about the Constitution, we're going to meet with this teacher at the law office of this mm. downtown district attorney who's going to work with us. You know, And so there were all kinds of classes going on using the community, which was mm -hmm. beautiful in terms of learning to use the community as a resource to investigate and explore things. So so they did a lot of that, but they found out that some kids weren't showing up. You know, mm. how do how do we hold kids accountable for coming to school and taking attendance? And you know, are there some traditional aspects of traditional schools that we ought to be implementing? Was part of the question that they mm -hmm. were dealing with, and so they decided to have what they called extended classes in the morning. Mm. First thing in the morning was a two and a half hour block of an interdisciplinary class that met the needs of and the interests of kids. You know, so there were classes like criminal justice. There was mm -hmm. another one on business and marketing. There was another one on family relationships, you know, all things that, you know, were, you know, drugs and alcohol and sex, mm -hmm. you know, was another one. So they, you know, there were classes that really honed in on the uh, interests and the needs of kids and the needs of society as well. Mm. So those kids would meet for a two and a half hour block with that teacher and they would pretty much decide what to do mm -hmm. and how to do it. 
and what the norms would be in that class in terms of behavior and expectations and are we allowed to smoke in here or not you know and mm -hmm. can we walk out can we get up and go to the bathroom if we want without asking for permission all those things were dealt with mm -hmm. fast forward ahead in terms of maybe 15 years or yeah roughly about that when i came on board i was teaching at a different school and they recruited me to come over and for some reason, I, I was the resource teacher for the, a new school they had started called the School of Law and Government, and I became hmm. the resource teacher because I, I could teach about law, even though I wasn't <laughs> an attorney, but I, could, I knew how to do that. So they said, well, here's a guy that we think would be good to come in at School Without Walls and help us in terms of recruitment because I had recruited the kids for that school and to teach here. So... I went over and it was interesting that the number of kids at School Without Walls, this was 15 years later, had declined from roughly 170 kids to mm -hmm. less than 100. Mm -hmm. And the question was, what's going on here? You know, how can, mm -hmm. we, how can we get kids to be interested? So I worked with the staff in terms of developing some marketing strategies. I, trained a group of kids from School Without Walls to go with me out to other nice. uh, junior high schools and talk about what we were about. And, you know, it, it worked for the most part. It took some time, you know, a couple of years to build the, uh, the right. student body up again. But they were, there, there was a good chance that they may have closed School Without Walls had, right. not we, had not they decided as a group that we need to do something about this. And so they devoted one of their staff positions to me doing that. Hmm. The extended class was an interesting process because it wasn't hmm. only interdisciplinary, but as I said, there was a process for developing the curriculum that was student generated as opposed hmm. to top hmm. down. Now it's interesting, you know, I'm gonna be a bit transparent here because here we are. I retired in 2010 and the school, School Without Walls has continued. It's still there and it's working for the most part, but the extended classes are now kind of more teacher driven as opposed mm, to student driven. And that's something that I'm working with them right now. I'm kind of an unpaid consultant to go in and work mm. with them. and. And that's, that's something that we, we're going to focus on is how to get student ideas and have teachers select their idea for their extended class theme mm -hmm. based on student input and interest as opposed to, well, I think I'll do it on great American art. That sounds mm -hmm. like something I, you know, I'm interested in as a teacher. I'm sure they will be too if I can right. do it, you know. So... <laughs> You know, that's, that's an important piece is mm -hmm, to, in mm -hmm. terms of self-determination theory is working with that concept in terms of how do we not only select the topic, but then let's work on what are our initial qu essential questions that we want to mm -hmm. get answers to. I mean, so suppose a teacher and the kids decide that criminal justice is going to be their focus, you know, which would be a good one to deal with in the city of Rochester, given all mm. the issues with policing and right. unfair practices of the history of discrimination and racism and whatever. So in terms of those questions, what are going to be the, the kinds of, not only questions, but what resources can we call mm. upon from the community to use and have the students participate in that kind of brainstorming as well. Well, mm -hmm. my, my father's a cop, you know. I mean, he might be interested in coming in and talking with us. Or I, how about that district attorney that you guys used to work with? Or whatever. So, again, building ownership and right. capitalizing on student interest, I think, is, is key to that. And then even ideas for projects. You know, what, mm -hmm. what is it that we want to investigate? What, is it, what are the key issues that we want to focus on? So how do we take all that interest and generate it into projects? And again, certainly teacher participation in terms of meaningful suggestions for kids, in terms of developing support for what they're going to do, mm -hmm. but also 
focusing again on structure as opposed to control. Right. Yeah. And again, yeah. a key part of self-determination theory. So the extended class it was a key issue as well as the curriculum building in it. Mm -hmm. I think, of course, the, the other question is, given complete freedom from mm -hmm. high-stakes standardized testing, what are we about? What are the skills and the knowledge that we want to build within kids, have them grow and develop in, in order to, to become effective, responsible citizens mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. with positive well-being and, as Ryan says, to flourish in terms right. of being right. a, a real living in, uh, human being who's enjoying life and mm -hmm. who's mm -hmm. doing something creative and participating in society. All those things, I think, right. were important. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.